So I've just gotten back from collecting my parts for the car. So that is the completed replacement of... Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode from Salvage Nation. And in this episode, we're jumping straight back on to my LCI 325i and we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off. Guys, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you're liking the content that Salvage Nations is putting out, make sure you give me a thumbs up on all my videos, guys. It helps, it really, really helps with pushing my content and I'll really, really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to that magical 1,000 subscribers and then hopefully grow my channel. Um, and I want you guys to be along for the journey. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. That being said, let's jump in. Come on, come on, come on. So if you remember in the last video, guys, we found out that there was lots of transmission oil. I've confirmed it was transmission oil. This is the transmission cooler. And also I've got a broken thermostat. It's right there. So these are the two main things I'm gonna focus on for today. Um, I'm not gonna be doing anything else. I wanna focus on my thermostat so that I can run the car safely without it overheating and damaging anything inside. And obviously I need to sort this out because if all the oil comes out of the transmission, it's not gonna work and the car would be stationary. It wouldn't be able to move back or forth. So with that being said, I need to head on down to a BMW breakers yard that I know in Barking, East London. I'm gonna head down there. I'm gonna pick up a whole bunch of parts. Then I need to stop off and get some automatic transmission fluid. Then we're gonna come back to the car and try to swap out my cooler, the hoses, and that thermostat. So let's crack on with it. Now we got those parts sorted, I'm very happy with what we've managed to collect today. But I need to stop off at my local EU parts store where I'm gonna collect a gallon of ATF fluid, automatic transmission fluid, to replenish all the oil that we've lost over the past couple of episodes in this car. So let's get down to EU parts, grab some oil, head back to the car, and hopefully we can get that oil cooler fitted in this episode and get this car back to a running state. Let's go. So guys, we've got everything we need. Let's head back to the car. Right guys, so I've just gotten back from collecting my parts for the car and let's go. Let's show you all the goodies that we've got. Starting here, this is my broken front slam panel and I kept that so that I could basically just show it up to my replacement one and I went out and I got a complete front slam panel with the reinforcement bar and everything else is complete. So have a look at that. It's just a straightforward bolt-on job for that. So that completely replaces this. But these are the two main important ones that I was really looking forward to. So this is my thermostat. If you look inside, you can see the thermostat inside. And the thermostat is rated to a certain level of heat. And once it reaches that um, threshold of heat, it opens up and it allows the car engine to be cooled down with coolant. So that's the whole point of a thermostat. It's very important, guys. So this is going to be going on on the car today. And then this is another thing. I went out and I bought the oil cooler for the transmission fluid. Now my one, I reckon I was able to, I would have been able to fix it. However, I didn't want to take the risk. And this one's coming with new cables as well. So this new cable, it literally just runs all the way down around the back of the engine. And then around here, it literally just pops in to the gearbox. Um, we've kept that closed off so that nothing can get inside the system. This is my old fan. I still need to buy a new fan and a new rad pack. However, I'm still gonna, I wanna connect that up for now to see if it's leaking and just for the car in the yard to move around, I'll still buy a new one. So that's where we're at for today. I've offloaded everything. So I've got my gloves on. Let's start to get that installed in the car. Right guys, so with the car jacked up, the first thing I want to tackle 
is the thermostat now that's the thermostat housing there and the thermostat is hidden inside of the thermostat housing this is the reservoir hose that goes to the reservoir right there and what the thermostat does it basically holds the water from the reservoir back until the engine is to a specific temperature and it needs cooling down and then it opens up slowly and releases the water and then the coolant goes around the system and cools the engine down so as you can see that is completely snapped right off and it's a bit of a pain to get to but i reckon i can still do it so where it is is can is bolted on to the water pump which is just there um so the first thing i need to do i've jacked it up i'm going to go underneath take down all of this protective layering underneath so i can get some space and then hopefully i can access the screws from down below so guys let's get on right guys so i've removed the undercarriage protective plastic underneath and it's giving me a bit more space if you have a look here i've taken off this holes off the front of the thermostat housing and if you look down there there's just two number 10 bolts one and two they're right next to each other if i take those off that should just come off and then if you look underneath it's just got one holes underneath that i need to remove and then that should be able to come off so it should be pretty it looks pretty straightforward fingers crossed that it is So right guys, we're under the car right now and if you just look here, I've taken off that one last retaining clip and this is the back end of the water pump. So the water pump is being driven by the engine, you've got this hose that goes from the water pump and it goes and it loops around there and it connects on the back end, I'll get the light, it connects on the back end of the thermostat right there, the black thermostat. So I just need to take that one off and then I can swap this out. There you go guys, <laughs> that's it, a mouthful of coolant. But we gotta do it guys, we haven't got a ramp, I wish I had one, but hopefully, haven't got a ramp as yet. But that's one step further closer to getting this all out. Oh. Right guys, now we're back on the top, have a look. Coming up pretty easily right now. I've just got one or two other little connectors. We've got one wire connected there at the bottom, and one more connection at the back, and this will be out. So I'll work away, get that out, and then I'll let you see. So guys, here we have it. This is where the damage was on my old thermostat. If you look inside, you can see the thermostat sitting inside. And this is now ready to be replaced. So there we go, guys. This is the old one that I've just removed. And this is the new one ready to be replaced. Now, I'll show you exactly what's broken. So if I turn it both this way, have a look at that. I've got that nipple is on my new one and that nipple is completely broken off from there so before I continue I need to take off the broken nipple from the holes so if you look inside here that's the broken nipple so I need to take that off and then I can put that one back in and to take that off I just need to pull out this little retainer clip I reattached all the hoses to my new thermostat that's the one that was broken on my old one so I'm gonna just wire it all back in and I'll be able to test the system so yeah, let's get it all back in and see what happens.
Alright guys, there you go. So that is the completed replacement of the thermostat for my 325i. So what I want to do now, I'm just going to, I believe that my old radiator is still holding. This is the water rad. It still looks, it's a bit bent, but I reckon it will still hold water. Let me just say guys, I will not be driving the car like that. I just want to make sure that the system is working and it will just allow me to be able to move the car in and out of the yard until I order the new parts and the new parts come maybe after Christmas. So with my thermostat complete, what I want to do, I need to try to sort out the oil cooler for the transmission fluids. Um, like I said, the cooler, I reckon I could have tried to repair that, but I'm not gonna bother. I got it really cheap from the scrapyard. So I've got the new one it's sitting over there. So it's literally just taking off all of these um, connectors and then that will be off. However, my issue is I need to get this one replaced. So I'm gonna replace both of them and they literally go right down that channel down there. The only issue is I need to gain access to underneath the car. So I'm gonna have to jack it up, try to get underneath the car from that end um, and try to get access to the gearbox and refill the fluid and then put the new hoses in and then that could be done. Once all of that is done, I will then try to plug in my, try to get this all plumbed up, my old broken um, rad. Now the water rad, it's all bent, but I reckon it will hold water. Um, I've tried it, I've filled it up, it's not leaking, it's just really, really bent. I will be replacing it at a later date, but like I said, I need to get the car mobile again. So I just want to do that and then hopefully we can get the system plumbed up. So this time around guys, I want to be really quick because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to stick you guys on to a time lapse, get cracked on with that and then hopefully, fingers crossed, I get it all done. Guys, if you're enjoying this kind of content, please, please, please smash that subscribe button. Make sure your bell notifications are on and make sure you give me a thumbs up so that YouTube know that you like my stuff. With that said, let's carry on. Right guys, so I'm gonna tackle changing not just the oil cooler which is there, but also the wires which run all the way down there. So it's a simple job in terms of just a matter of removing a few nuts and bolts, but they're in such a tight and tricky space. And let me show you what I need to do. So it starts at the front and it goes all the way under. Now this is a job where I'd need a ramp and stuff like that, but I haven't got a ramp, but I'm not scared. We're still gonna do it. So I've gone ahead and I've removed the, the pan and the shielding from underneath. And you can see right, let me get the light. Right there is where it goes into the gearbox. I need to get that undone, which is one and there's another one and you can see it just goes up in there and it goes right up to the front now i reckon i might be able to or i might not be able to but i'm going to give it a go there you go guys so this is my broken oil cooler there's the oil that was the problem that was my leak I've got a replacement like for like. This is the one that came on the car. You can see the damage is there and the connector is completely squashed. Have a look inside. This one has got some brand new shiny connectors. Still connected. I'm not even gonna take them off. I'll leave them as it is. All I need to do is remove some bits off of this, put it onto that one. This end connects to the radiator via this hose. So I need to take that off and that's it. Look guys, so it's completely like for like. Have a look. And that should be straightforward, fingers crossed. So let's go get this onto the car and then we should be able to go. All I need to do now is fish this one back down, go underneath the car, put it back in the gearbox. But before I do, I've got some automatic transmission fluid to fill it up and then we can start to plumb the system. So let's go.
there we go guys and there we have it I'm very proud of myself I've never done this before it took a little bit of messing about but there we go so I've got my oil cooler plugged in to the radiator system and that goes all the way back and that plugs into the thermostat that I plugged that I connected up earlier these are the two main lines that carries and returns the oil to and from the gearbox and that's gone on down to the bottom of the gearbox it was pretty easy in the end so before I continue now the last thing I need to do before I can plumb everything up is I need to go borrow a pump from next door pump some transmission fluid into the transmission fill it up to the limit plumb it all up and then hopefully guys that's it should be no more leaking either the water or the oil and that will be a very successful day so fingers crossed let's go get the pump and continue right guys so i've got a gallon of atf fluid which was matched with the registration on my car and i've went and borrowed this pump from next door so i dipped the pump in here it sucks up i don't know exactly how much is in there yep so 1.5 liters fill this up with the transmission fluid and then I've got two options I can either pop this nozzle into the gearbox itself or what will be easier is if I take this one off and I can pop the nozzle for that into this because this leads directly into the reservoir on the gearbox anyway so this is the return pipe this is the pipe from the pump this is the return pipe so this would be able to get filled up really easily if this I'll try this one first. If this doesn't work, then I will go back under the car. I'll prefer to do it from here and fill it up with this. So we're getting late, we're running out of time, we're running out of light, but I wanna get this done today so that I can plumb my system and get the car running tonight. And then I can sit and see if anything's leaking. And then I've got a better idea of what I need to order tonight when I get home. But it's been a all day job. <laughs> You're going to get this condensed down to about 20 minutes, guys. But believe me, I've been on the go with all of this stuff, collecting the parts, fitting it since about 8 this morning. Um, it's now approaching 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So a way to show your appreciation and support, guys, is to smash that like button and also subscribe and make sure your bell notifications are on so you don't miss any future updates. That being said, guys, I'll stick it on the time lapse and get started. Definitely a ramp job, but we don't have them, so we have to do what we have to do. Right, guys, so good news and bad news. Everything is plumbed in and I, my radiator, it turns out it is leaking. I've got a bit of plastic because I didn't want the water to go onto the engine, but I'm going to switch it off. The engine is running fine. My oil leak has been fixed down there. My water leak is okay right there. It's just the radiator, which I know. That's why I only put water in it and I didn't put anything else. Now that I know everything on the car is sorted, guys, this is where we're going to end. Right, guys, it's been a long old day. I'm an absolute mess. I've got oil all over me, water all, all over me, but I'm happy guys, it was worth it. My thermostat is sorted, my oil leak is sorted, 
everything on the car is sorted. Have a listen to this, guys. Car sounds amazing. And this is where we're gonna end the video, guys. I'm gonna go home, have a nice long bath. Um, everything that I set out to do today has been completed. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I am knackered. So, like I said, guys, I always say this, but I really, really need you guys, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please smash that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss what is coming up on Salvage Nations for this build and future builds. Got some exciting stuff coming. So smash that subscribe button. And if you like the content, make sure you give me a thumbs up because it lets YouTube know that you like my stuff and it helps in my quest in getting my channel to grow and get into a thousand subscribers and beyond so i would like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out to watch my content um, i hope you enjoyed it and like i always say guys keep it moving and i'll catch you in the next one peace let's see if the gears are finally changing after that guys we have movement <laughs>